Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's understand the classification of proteins. Proteins are classified as fibrous proteins and globular proteins. In globular protein we have primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure and quaternary structure. We also have membrane protein we will not discuss. We will discuss more of fibrous protein and globular protein. So let's start with fibrous protein. So what are fibrous protein? As the name suggests fibrous, that means shape is like fiber. This word came from fiber. Right? So if you see, so when the polypeptide chain runs parallel, they run parallel and they are held together by hydrogen bond and disulfide bonds, then the fiber or rod-like structure is formed. This is called fibrous protein, shape like fiber. Also, this is also called protein. The shapes like rods or wires or fibers, they are storage protein. The shape like rope. If you see, ropes fire, they look like rope. They are water insoluble. They are water insoluble. They are not uh, soluble in water. And they don't denature easily. We will we'll talk about denature. Uh, uh, later, just understand they don't denature easily. We will talk about this later. And they are found only in animals. They are found only in animals and they are used to connect connective tissues, tendons, bone matrix, etc. Right? For example, keratin in the hair, collagens. These are the examples of fibrous proteins. They have very little or almost no tertiary structure only primary and secondary structure. The primary structure uh, decide the sequence and the secondary structure decides this hydrogen bonding with this and they form another uh, a big rope like structure. Right? They have long parallel polypeptide chains and this cross linkage in the interval forms long fibers or sheets. So they are fibrous proteins like fiber or rope. They generally have primary and secondary structure. They don't have tertiary structure. So you will understand more about tertiary structure when we discuss globular protein because they have primary, secondary and tertiary structure all. Right? They are water insoluble and they are storage proteins found only in animals. The next is globular protein. The name states from globe. This globe. Why? Because they look like globe. It's all three dimensional. If you see it looks like a sphere globe. They are water soluble and this structure comes when chain of polypeptides they coil around and to give a spherical shape right they are water soluble for example insulin and they have complex tertiary and secondary structure also right they, they uh, finally the final structure is like a globe and that's why it's called globular uh, protein and they have a role in metabolic reaction. Hemoglobin enzyme, they are example of this globular protein, right? So if you see this protein, it's so complex to understand. It's very really complex. I'm not able to get anything out of it. So to understand this protein, what chemist has told, let's break this. Let's break this into small, small parts and let's try to understand this protein. So they broke this protein into four structures, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. So primary structure, let's suppose let's take this, this part of the protein and let's zoom in. You'll see a sequence of amino acids, right? So this sequence of amino acid is nothing but primary structure. Primary structure is nothing but my sequence of amino acid. Because this sequence plays a critical role. If you change the sequence, the, the property will change. So in order to function properly, the protein must have correct sequence right so if you change the primary structure or the sequence of the protein the protein will be a different protein altogether it will have a different function so the sequence matters this is i'm talking only about the sequence of the protein here right only the sequence so once i have the sequence i get something like this then you see that this is curled and that will come as part of secondary structure so secondary structure gives specific shape it gives Geometric shape. Correct? 
and it is caused by intermolecular and intramolecular bonding. So if you see, there are two kind of shape here. One, if you see, is something like this, alpha helix. This guy is alpha helix. And if you see, some are straight ones. They are beta pleated. Correct? So I have alpha helix secondary structure and, and I have beta pleated secondary structure. So till now what we have seen, the primary structure talks only about the sequence, right? So once I know the sequence, because sequence also matters for proteins, different sequence will give you different protein. And once I have the sequence, I'm talking about the geometric shape. So it, it may be alpha helix or beta applicates. So let's talk about this uh, structure in detail. Let's talk about alpha helix in detail. So alpha helix is the most common way in which the polypeptide chain forms hydrogen bond by twisting in the right hand screw rule. So if you see, it looks like a screw, right? Right hand, with the right hand screw rule, this is done. And this is the most stable secondary structure because there's a hydrogen bonding between COH and NH. NH, if you see, and CO, there's a hydrogen bonding here. Right? NH of this and the next COH will have a hydrogen bonding and it will form a beta, uh, sorry, it will form a helix. And this is the most stable secondary structure. If you see, this is my helix. The next type is the beta pleated. The pleated word comes from this pleat. If you see this uh, skirt, it has pleats, right? And this pleat is similar to that pleat. This is pleats here. Correct? So, in this case, the peptide chains are stretched out to the maximum extension and then laid side by side. And they're held together by intramolecular hydrogen bonding. So you see, there is a hydrogen bonding. And you see, they have pleat-like structure. They have pleat-like structure. If you see this one, they have pleat-like structure, right? So this pleat is similar to the skirt. This is pleat. They have, they, all the peptide chains are stretched out the maximum extension, and then they are laid side by side. And then they are held together by the intramolecular hydrogen bond. This is not that stable. The helix is more stable. So once I have seen the secondary structure, you see the red ones, this one, I have zoomed it. They are further folded to give a secondary uh, tertiary structure, right? So the force that stabilize the tertiary structure are hydrogen bonding. You see, there is a hydrogen bonding here. Or disulfide bond. Or van der Waal force of attraction or electrostatic force, electrostatic force actually, or sometimes there's a bond itself. So these are the force which gives a little different shape. So this is, this is, this shape you see is the uh, helixical shape, right? And these shape, again, a long chain of this will get a twisted and turned shape because of the hydrogen bond, because of the sulfide bond, the electrostatic force, van der Waal force. So this whole structure is called tertiary structure. That is a, I have the secondary structure was my helix of uh, beta pleated. Now that secondary structure itself, you now you further fold, you get tertiary structure. Now if you see the whole protein, there were other tertiary structure mixed. For example, this protein was composed of this tertiary structure, this tertiary structure, this tertiary structure, this structure, four mixed, right? So that is quaternary structure. So some proteins, if you see, they are composed of two or more polypeptide chain. So this is one unit, this is one unit. All these units are combined. And these units combine to form globe-like structure. And this structure is called quaternary structure. Correct? So this partial arrangement of these subunits with respect to each other is called quaternary structure. Let's do a recap on the protein. So I have my primary structure. That is nothing but my sequence. Once I have the sequence, I have the secondary structure. There are two types of secondary structure. Either it is alpha helix or beta pleated. So if you see, beta pleated, there is one pleat, one pleat, hydrogen bond here, and this is uh, something like this, and they have hydrogen bond here, right? So once I have beta pleated, I have tertiary structure, uh, which has sulfide bond, van der Waal force attraction, they form this kind of structure, and many of uh, proteins, many of the tertiary structure form quaternary structure, something like this. Let's see a 3D view of the globular protein. This is how a protein looks like. And this is, you see, it looks almost like a globe. It has, uh, 
you can just from this you can make out the primary structure you can make that is a sequence the secondary structure the helical you can see and the beta pleated you can see right those are my these are my um, uh, what do you call them? beta pleated this is my helical and uh, quaternary structure this whole brown one is a one uh, one tertiary structure this blue one is a one tertiary structure this green one is one tertiary structure and you combine everything you get quaternary structure this is a third 3d view of a globular protein this is our protein looks like if you talk about the hemoglobin this is how hemoglobin is this is my hemoglobin actually this is the hemoglobin if you zoom it further you get this and if you zoom it further you get this if you zoom it further you get this so if you see this was the main protein this is my quaternary structure if you zoom it further you take the blue part this is my ter uh, tertiary structure and in this if you see this part helical part this is my secondary structure and in the secondary structure if you see the sequence this is my primary structure this is my primary this is my secondary 2 degree this is my 3 degree and this is my 4 degree quaternary so this is how it is okay this is my hemoglobin it looks like this you zoom it you see only the blue part this is my tertiary structure you see the helical pattern in this uh, you get this secondary structure and in this secondary structure you see the sequence that is my primary structure now we'll talk about the denaturation of protein thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get pre-study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again